Okay, so we all know that the testes are a pair of primary sex organs of the male and are located in the subpubic region of the pelvis along with the rest of the male reproductive components. The testes are ovoid shaped by lateral organs, roughly 4 cm long, with a diameter of 3 cm in an adult male. They have two functional roles sperm production and testosterone secretion. The testes reside inside the scrotum, a cutaneous fibromuscular sac, which hangs outside of the body and contains the testes, the epididymides, and distal parts of the left and right spermatic cords. These are contained within several fascial layers, which act to protect and regulate the testes, beginning most superficially with the scrotal skin, the datos fascia, the external spermatic fascia, the cremaster muscle and fascia, and the internal spermatic fascia. The testis itself is also invested in a number of layers, which are known as tunicae. These are the tunica vaginalis, the tunica albuginea, and the tunica vasculosa. Tunica means clothing in Latin and is often used in biology to describe the layers which immediately surround an organ. The outermost tunica is the tunica vaginalis, which consists of two layers called the visceral and parietal layers. This layer is actually derived from the peritoneum and is carried with the testis as they descend from the abdomen. If we look closely at our illustration, we can see that although it looks like there are two separate layers, in fact, both layers are continuous with each other. The visceral layer is innermost and is tightly adhered to most of the testis except at its hilum. The parietal layer is the outermost and is separated from the visceral layer by the cavity of the tunica vaginalis. This cavity is filled with a small amount of lubricating fluid, which is secreted by serous membranes in both layers and functions to give cushioning to the testis. The next layer, the tunica albuginea, is a thick, collagen-rich layer which lies underneath the visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis. The collagen gives it a whitish colour and provides strength. The tunica albuginea surrounds the testis only and does not encapsulate the epididymis. The last layer is the tunica vasculosa, which is often overlooked as it is very tightly adhered to the tunica albuginea. Because of this, it is difficult to illustrate and is best viewed under the microscope using a thin cross-sectional slice of a testis and a trichome stain. The tunica vasculosa is a layer rich in vascular tissue and contains a plexus of blood vessels, which extends over the internal aspect of the tunica albuginea, providing nutrients to the cells of the testis. Now, I think we can lay off these layers for a bit and turn our focus to the internal structure of the testis. Along the posterior border of the testis, the tunica albuginea and vasculosa project internally to form the mediastinum testis. This is a mass of fibrous connective tissue and acts as a sort of gateway for the entrance and exit of blood vessels. The mediastinum testis also houses the reti testes, which we'll come to later. If we look a bit closer at the mediastinum testis, can you see that there appears to be a fibrous network radiating into the testis? Well, this fibrous network is called the septa testes. Just like the mediastinum, the septa testes are derived from the tunica albuginea and vasculosa. Consequently, they are composed of collagen fibres and are embedded with vascular tissue. These septa have a really important job in defining and bringing nutrients to the testicular lobules. In reality, there are roughly 250 to 300 of these lobules in each testis, which those in the centre being generally larger than those at the superior and inferior extremities. But what is the point of these lobules, and what are these tubules contained within them? Each lobule is typically composed of three convoluted seminiferous tubules. There are also straight seminiferous tubules, but these appear further on the convoluted seminiferous tubules, have a job to provide a comfortable environment for spermatogenesis, which is just a fancy word for the differentiation of a germ cell into a spermatozoa. There are two male-specific cells to help with this job, sertoli, or nurse cells, which make up the majority of the tubule epithelium, and interstitial, or Leydig cells, which reside in the interstitium. And we can have a quick look at these cells if we zoom into the histological slide. Sertoli cells or nurse germ cells, develop through the spermatogenic process, and Leydig cells synthesize and secrete a number of androgens, including testosterone, which is important in regulating spermatogenesis. 
We can see both these cell types in this histological slide. But if you want more information on them, please check out our content on the histology of the testes. Now, just imagine for a second that you're a spermatozoa. You'll start your journey in these convoluted seminiferous tubules and have approximately 7 metres to travel between this point and the urinary meatus. If we scale a sperm up to human size, that's the equivalent of travelling approximately 260 kilometres. In travelling such a distance, energy conservation is essential, and whilst we might jump on a bus, such luxuries are unavailable to a sperm. Therefore, other means of energy conservation must be available. Consequently, sperm are only motile after they have passed through the epididymis. Until they are motile, sperm rely on fluid flow, caused by peristaltic contractions from smooth muscle in the convoluted tubes for transportation. Fluid flow first transports sperm to the straight seminiferous tubules. No spermatogenesis occurs here, and these tubules serve as an intermediary between the convoluted seminiferous tubules and the reti testes. Like we saw previously, the straight seminiferous tubules are surrounded by smooth muscle which aids fluid flow. The reti testes are located in the mediastinum testes and consist of a network of anastomosing ducts which are not surrounded by smooth muscle like the seminiferous tubules. The reti testes function to condense the numerous seminiferous tubules into approximately 15 efferent ductules. These efferent ductules perforate the superior portion of the tunica albuginea and leave the testis. The efferent ductules help ensure absorption of water from fluid produced by the testis. The ductules are once again surrounded by a thin circular coat of smooth muscle, which contracts in a peristaltic manner to maintain fluid flow. These ductules are initially straight, but soon become enlarged and highly convoluted, forming the head of the epididymis. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.